The Philosopher's Stone is typically depicted as being red. It is a legendary alchemic substance capable of turning base materials such as mercury into gold. It is also called the Elixir of Life. The stone is useful for rejuvenation and for achieving immortality. In media, it has been given many other abilities, but more on that later. For many centuries, it was the most sought after goal in all of alchemy and still is in many forms of media. As I stated earlier, the stone was one of the most sought after goals in all of alchemy from the Middle Ages to the late 17th century. Alchemy was the medieval ancestor of chemistry. The basic fundamental goal of alchemy is the transmutation of base metals into noble metals, particularly gold. It is possible it was not even a stone at all because it was known under many other names, such as the tincture, the powder, or the materia Prima. Alchemists have spent years searching for the stone and examined countless substances in their laboratory, building a base knowledge that would spawn fields of chemistry, pharmacology, and metallurgy. Many of the Western world's most brilliant minds have searched for the Philosopher's Stone over the centuries, including Roger Boyle himself and even Sir Isaac Newton, who we now know had a tendency to secretly dabble in the realm of alchemy during his lifetime. Obviously, he failed to obtain or recreate the stone as he is, well, not alive today and the stone grants immortality. The same can be said for anybody else we talk about in this video because none of them are alive, so they're obviously not using the stone for immortality. However, then comes the man most of you are probably familiar with from one form of media or the other, which we will be discussing later in the video. Nicholas Flamel himself. Nicholas Flamel was a French bookseller and notary who lived in Paris during the 14th and early 15th centuries. In 1382, Flamel claimed to have transformed lead into gold after decoding an ancient book of alchemy with the help of a Spanish scholar familiar with the mystic Hebrew text known as the Kabbalah. Whether or not this is true, the historical records show that Flamel did come into considerable wealth around this time and donated his riches to charity. There is a theory that knowledge of the Philosopher's Stone was given to Adam directly from God himself. Some attribute the long lifespan of some biblical figures to the rejuvenation and immortality granted by the stone. There is plenty more to the stone on an alchemic level, but that goes beyond stuff I can really comprehend and understand. So I think now is a good time to go and talk about the Philosopher's Stone in media. Given how legendary it is, much like the eight orbs from Nanosto Satomi Hakudan, the Philosopher's Stone has made various appearances in media and been used as a MacGuffin for decades. It appeared in the Japanese manga series Full Metal Alchemist and allowed the person wielding it to violate the series' alchemic laws of equivalent exchange. However, it comes at a terrible price, as in the series, it is composed of the souls of humans. The Flash villain, Dr. Alchemy, has the Philosopher's Stone and uses its powerful ability to transmute any element to commit crime. Yes, he does actually use something that can turn anything to pure gold to rob banks. Much like many of the Flash's villains, he is terrible at being a villain. Probably the most obvious one here is the stone's appearance in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, unless you live in America, then you may not even know this. However, in Harry Potter and Philosopher's Stone, it displays its traditional abilities of turning lead into gold and creating the elixir of life. Now, while these abilities are never shown on screen, it is explained 
that it does have the ability in a book the characters read about it. Here's an old one for you guys. The Philosopher's Note appeared in an episode of Johnny Quest, The Real Adventure. The villain greedily used the stone's power to make himself rich, and in consequence, lost his soul. Many forms of media seem to depict the Philosopher's Stone being somehow connected to souls, which I've always found incredibly interesting. In the Justice League at the animated series episode, A Knight of the Shadows, the villain Morrigan Lee Frey seeks the Philosopher's Stone in order to use his power to allow her son more than to take over the world. These are just a few that I was able to find over time. There are obviously hundreds more because there are hundreds of stories in existence. But I would like to take a moment to look at the Philosopher's Stone's role in all of these stories as a MacGuffin. A MacGuffin is a term used for a motivating element in a story that is used to drive the plot. It serves no further purpose and it won't really matter in the end. A great example of this are the Seven Horcruxes in Harry Potter. Do they really do anything but to give the characters a goal throughout the story? No! Don't do anything except possibly distract you while you try to figure out its significance. Why does it exist? What does it add besides to pad out the plot? In some cases, it won't even be shown. Like in One Piece, the One Piece treasure has yet to be shown. It's really just there to give the main characters a goal. It's usually a mysterious package, artifact, or weapon that everybody in the story is chasing. There are countless stories that center around a group of characters chasing down the Philosopher's Stone. How this is done, how the stone is created, or whether or not the stone is even real depends on the writer. Some writers would have the characters spend the entire story chasing the stone only to be told it does not exist. Some writers use it as the driving force for their plot. However, unlike many MacGuffins, because the Philosopher's Stone is a real historical item, it is a lot easier for an audience to accept it as a plot device or MacGuffin because of the fact that people do know about it. You hear someone ask of a Philosopher's Stone, and you have the reaction very similar to what you would hear if you heard somebody was after a great treasure, using a treasure map. The Philosopher's Stone has been around for centuries, so there's obviously a lot I couldn't cover in its appearances in media. I tried to cover a lot of its major ones in, like, storytelling, but I probably missed a few. There's millions of books, there's millions of video games, there's millions of movies. So if I did miss one, tell me in the comments about it. I hope you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Please share the video and like it. I put a lot of work in this video, so I want people to see it. And yeah, have a nice day.